Hello, I'm Pastor Shannon, and I want to welcome you to our Christmas Eve service. We hope that you will be blessed as we sing favorite carols, hear the Christmas story, and share communion and candlelight. Take a moment and make sure that you are prepared. If you picked up a gift box at our church, have it close by. If you didn't, your experience will be more meaningful if you're able to get some candles and elements to use in communion. We also want you to know that every penny of the offering tonight is going to fund missions, meeting real needs in our community and around the world. When giving online, simply designate your gift for Faith Promise. I know that 2020 has been a strange and difficult year, and attending an online worship service might not have been a part of your Christmas traditions. But we can rejoice that on the first Christmas, God stepped into our world in an unusual way. While we won't ever have another first Christmas like the one 2,000 years ago, I believe that God still shows up in unusual and surprising ways. And I hope it happens for you and for everyone you love this night. Would you pray with us? Lord God, grant us hope as we come to celebrate your movement from heaven to earth. Bless us tonight that we may receive the gift of God's presence unto us. Amen. And from the Snyder family, hear now a reading of God's word as told through the voice of the prophet Isaiah from the seventh chapter of the book of Isaiah. Therefore, the Lord God himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. And so tonight we light the Christ candle at the center of the fully lit Advent wreath. May we all receive the gift of our Emmanuel, God with us, through the light that shines into the world at the birth of Jesus our Christ. And let all of God's children who walk in the way of the light say, Amen. Amen.
shall be Prince of Peace, mighty God, his name shall be I'm Jim Roy. I'll be reading from Isaiah 9, verses 2 and verses 6 and 7. Draw near and hear the word of the Lord. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I was a child, I was scared of the dark. I grew up with an older brother, and as kids, we always shared the same bedroom. Two twin beds. He was in his bed on his side of the room, and I was in my bed four feet away on my side of the room. You know, you'd think I'd never be scared at night with my older brother so close to me in my room. But that just wasn't the case. I was terrified of the dark, and it was in no small part because of my older brother. In an early season of life, he just scared the bejeebers right out of me. Don't ask me what a bejeeber is because I never got to find out. Mine was completely scared out of me before the age of six. My brother's five years older than me, and that's not a big deal these days, but when we were little, it was huge. Especially during the years when he first discovered those low-budget horror movies that were on TV Sunday afternoons, you know, back when we were kids. He mainly laughed out loud as we watched, but not me. I sat wide-eyed and dead silent, taking in all that fear deep into my childhood psyche. And to make things worse, once the movie was over, you know that older brother, he'd often take the rest of the afternoon sneaking up behind me to grab me like one of those monsters from whatever movie we just had the bejeebers scared right out of us from. The louder I shrieked, the louder he laughed. It's amazing I survived my childhood. It's amazing my brother survived my childhood. <laughs> What's not so amazing was how scared I was of the dark when bedtime came. Mom tried everything to help get me through it. A big old teddy bear, my own Linus comfort blanket. But the only thing that worked for me was a 100 watt nightlight position pillow high next to our two twin beds. You know, there's just something calming about a bright, bright light in the midst of the darkness, isn't there? Especially when it shines directly on your big brother's cringing face all night long while you sleep like a baby. Now that I'm supposedly become a grown-up, I'm not scared of the things that scared me when I was a child. Now other things have taken their place. The truth is, I get scared when the world gets dark. 2020 has been, by any standard, a year full of darkness. If we learned anything from this year, darkness has a way of just eating away at our peace. We just can't see what's coming at us in the dark. So our minds tend to fill in the shadows. And for some reason, maybe it's because our bejeebers left us long ago, we just know that nothing good lurks in the darkness. I find myself, just like that little boy I was so long ago, scared, seeking the light, yearning for the light, crying out, 
Would someone please flip the light switch and turn on the light? But the light I seek now, it isn't a 100 watt light bulb 12 inches from my pillow. The light I seek now is much, much brighter than that. The light I seek now shines brightest at Christmas. There's just something special about Christmas light. Christmas light transforms the darkness as only, only God can. I think it's because Christmas light shines more than just physical light. Christmas light shines God into the world. I have these incredible images forever embedded in my soul of my grandfather's farmhouse. That's where we would spend Christmas when I was a child. It was a two-story farmhouse in the midst of a small rural community, but even in the darkest, harshest nights of a South Dakota winter, it mysteriously, wonderfully, miraculously lit up the entire countryside for miles in every direction with Christmas light. Well, that's my childhood memory anyway. What's really weird is that two-story farmhouse never was decorated on the outside. The light I'm referring to was coming entirely from the inside. You see, that inside light did more than light up the darkness out there. It lit up my soul in here. Isaiah foretold of that Christmas light long ago. The people who walked in darkness will see a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For unto us a child has been born, unto us a son has been given. The Christmas light I believe this prophecy speaks of is so bright that no darkness will ever overcome it. Not even the darkness of 2020, not even whatever darkness currently surrounds you in your life. This light, it doesn't come from our world. <laughs> this light doesn't come from us. This light comes from God. So of course, heaven burst open in song on this night with the herald angels proclaiming, the heavenly light switch has been flipped on. The Christmas light is now raining. I'll be reading from Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, 
keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The light has come. But what exactly does that mean? It means all us children of God who are scared of the dark, we, we don't have to be scared anymore. When the light flipped on, the heavenly light switch caused a divine flip-flop of sorts. Two small insignificant letters in the middle of the word scared, the C and the A, they hop up and change places forever on this holy night, causing scared to transform into sacred. The word scared becomes the sacred word. Now the darkness runs away in fear because the Christmas light is here. Ask Mary, she knows. She knows all the rejection she has felt doesn't matter anymore. She knows a divine plan is unfolding through her. She knows the Christmas light just came into this world. She treasured it all and pondered it in her heart. I think we're supposed to do the same. His arrival changes everything because his arrival changes us. We can be adopted into the family of God as children of God because the Christmas light came to flesh in flesh. It's why I think this family story resonates best when told through a small child's voice. One of my first years serving as a pastor, I found myself running out of time to plan the Christmas Eve service. I know that sounds strange, but anybody that's ever served in the life of a church knows the time warp that happens between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Partly out of inspiration and partly out of desperation, I decided to invite my son, who was four at the time, to be the guest reader to recite the Christmas story from Luke that night. The plan was to read Luke's entire Christmas story from in those days a decree went out through do not be afraid for I am bringing you good news all the way to Mary pondered these things in her heart. Jacob, like most children that age, could memorize a ton of scripture. As the days went by, it began to look as though he might be able to recite the whole thing from memory, you know, like little Linus did in that Charlie Brown Christmas special. We knew there'd be more people in the church that night than Jacob had ever seen before, so we didn't print his name in the bulletin just to hedge our bet. Instead, we just listed guest reader, just in case at the last minute plans needed to be changed. The big night finally came, Christmas Eve. After singing the Christmas hymn, I invited forward the big guest reader, and then I placed a step stool behind the pulpit. Up from the crowd popped our son in his four-year-old glory. People started to snicker as he stomped his way around the prayer rail to the waiting step stool. He literally climbed his way up into the pulpit, and I was standing right there beside him just in case. Matter of fact, I'd even printed in large letters the two full pages of scripture that he'd recite that night just in case he needed them. I'll never forget what happened next. He grabbed the mic with one hand, pulled it down towards his mouth, and then he pushed the two seats that I'd placed in front of him out of the way with an indignant, Daddy, I don't need them, shove. But rather than face directly to all the people in front of him, 
a scary sight, he turned his head to the side and recited all the verses without bump and without hesitation. You could hear a pin drop as that packed church listened to this small child bring the good news of Jesus Christ. When he finished, he promptly pushed the mic back into its normal place, an early version of today's mic drop, climbed down the stepladder and stomped back to the pews from whence he'd come with a smile on his face as the crowd went nuts. Later when we talked about that night, I found out why he stared to the side. <laughs> you see, mom had told him, if you get scared, don't look at all the people. Just look at the lights of the Christmas tree, the one standing right there in the corner of the church. Do you see? It was his Linus moment. As he pushed the script aside, it was his moment of dropping his Linus security blanket to the ground. It was the transformation of his scared moment into his sacred moment by the presence of the Christmas light that comes into the world. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. This is the story that turns those scary places in our lives into sacred places where we're no longer alone. So go ahead, be a child again tonight, and fear not this dark world. The present is still there calling out to you. Come open me. I am here, wrapped, wrapped in bands of cloth, ready for you to receive me. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, of all the gifts we've received, this is the best gift, the gift of God's presence. God with us, the light has come. The heavenly light switch has been flipped on. Jesus has been born into our world. The word scared has been transformed into the sacred word. Mary knows, Joseph knows, the shepherds in the fields know. Linus knows, Jacob knows, and all of you know. So keep your eyes on the Christmas light. It will turn, O oh, scary night, into O oh, holy night, as things that are scary disappear into God's Christmas light. Happy birthday, Jesus. Amen. I know how exciting this night is. There are presents under the tree just screaming to be unwrapped, either tonight or tomorrow. 
but yet we gather in this holy sacred moment to celebrate the receipt of one specific gift, the gift of Jesus Christ. And so we come to this time of holy sacrament, this time of holy communion that goes beyond distance, time, nothing borders it. This is God's pure love given to us this night. I just simply want to draw you back into that space, into that room. Jesus was with his disciples and he took the bread, gave thanks to his father, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, eat of it often in remembrance of me. At the end of that meal, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to the Father, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Behold, this is the cup of the new covenant, for it contains my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins and the forgiveness of the sins of many to come. Drink of it often in remembrance of me. And so on this O Holy Night, we gather together to invite the Holy Spirit to bless whatever it is for you that is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ where you are, that across time, across space, across all things, Christ binds us together. Let us invite the blessing of Jesus Christ into these elements for us on this holy night. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us, wherever we may be in this holy moment, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts that were for us, what will be the body and blood of Christ for us this moment, this evening. Make them be for all of us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by your holy blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry with all the world until Christ comes in that final victory and we all gather together at that great heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we're inviting you to receive the body of Jesus Christ, and the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us celebrate this Holy Communion on this holy night together.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus also said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The light of Christ has come, but it is not meant to be kept. It is meant to be shared. As we sing Silent Night, light your candle and share the flame with each other and with the world. Let your light shine. As we close, I want to remind you about our special offering tonight with 100% of your giving being committed to mission work in our community and the world, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, comforting the homeless, giving hope to those in despair, and sharing faith with those who wander. You can give online at our website or you can mail a check to the church. However you give, please make sure to mark your gift for Faith Promise. You don't need me to tell you that 2020 has been a hard year, but what I do want to tell you is that because we have Emmanuel, God with us, we can carry our past, we can face our present, and we can hope for the future with joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Merry Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. So let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Wow.
Now 